Northern Ireland MP and that makes speaking in debates like these rather peculiar because everyone from Northern Ireland has a background or a perceived affiliation. I find that when I say something nationalists agree with, they say, well, he hasn't forgotten where he's come from. When I say something they disagree with, they say he should be ashamed of himself <laughs> given where he's come from. <laughs> Similarly with unionists, when I say something they agree with, they say fair play to him given where he's from. And when I say something that they disagree with, they say, well, what would you expect? So I have a knack of annoying everybody, which I hope to continue in the two minutes that I have available uh, now. I just want to make a couple of quick substantive uh, points and then say something about the Good Friday Agreement. Firstly, the only people seeking to change the border who have, or who have proposed a fundamental change to the border are those proposing that we leave the single market and the customs union. It was the UK government that fundamentally altered the nature of the border when it suggested that, not the Irish government. The principle of consent is firmly enshrined. Northern Ireland will remain a part of the United Kingdom until the majority of the people there decide otherwise. Notwithstanding that, there is a unique position because people born in Northern Ireland have a right to Irish citizenship by virtue of their birth there. My constituents in St Helens don't have a right to be Irish because they're born in St Helens, neither do people in Manchester, Birmingham, Glasgow or Cardiff. I would, of course... At this late stage, and like him, I am deeply disappointed with the government's inadequate response to arguments made today to protect the Good Friday Agreement. I am also disappointed that they appear prepared to risk a vote that could be perceived as challenging bipartisan support for the agreement. But so we are not prepared to do that, and so we will not be seeking to divide the House. I just thought he should know that while he continues. Thank my honourable friend for that. I think that's very strong and very clear. The legacy of the peace process is not a Labour legacy. It's a shared legacy between us all. I hope the party on the other side would reflect on that in these debates, and I'm disappointed that it hasn't accepted the amendment today. It's disingenuous to say that the European Union is not mentioned in the Good Friday Agreement. Its writ runs through the Good Friday Agreement. The Good Friday Agreement was predicated on the basis that we would both remain members of the European Union around strands south cooperation and indeed strand three on east-west cooperation it is mentioned specifically in terms of areas upon which we can discuss and there are shared uh, competencies i want to uh, also remind the house that while we talk a lot about the referendum to leave the european union and the result of that by referenda on the island of Ireland by a majority of people exercising their right, uh, their democratic right in both parts of the island of Ireland, and we need to respect that referendum as well as the referendum uh, on the on the on the European Union. Look, the debate uh, focuses primarily and largely on trade, on tariff, and on regulatory alignments. The Good Friday Agreement and the peace process is much more than that. It is much more than that. I said in this house in my maiden speech that there was no contradiction to being British and Irish, to having feelings of loyalty, affinity and affection for both countries. That is being tested by this, but I stand by it, and I would plead with the government, through this Brexit process, do not make people choose.